Hello friends and welcome back to my channel. So I'm reading for Sagittarius Energy today and I'm doing this almost immediately after doing Scorpio's reading. Uh, you're kind of hot on the heels of Scorpio. So I kind of feel like a little bit of restless or impatient energy for you, which is interesting because you're the temperance card in the tarot, which is like cool your heels, right? Cool your jet, slow down, Sagittarius. So I don't know if you're feeling very like, um, like wanting to do a lot, like keeping busy, maybe quite proactive, maybe like tidying the house or getting jobs done or just, you've just got, got this energy of kind of like being very occupied, like with whatever it is you're doing. I don't know, because I'm kind of looking at like how he's kind of, um, you know, passing the water between these two cups. He's like, he's very focused on whatever this job is that he's doing. Um, and then it's almost like this cycle change either creeping up on you or it's like maybe because it's Wheel of Fortune, right? It's like uh, something lucky. It feels like almost stumbling into something, like like stumbling into, I don't know, it could be like finding money. You know, like when money just blows up in front of you in the street and you're like, oh, you know, a, a 10 pound note, nice. Um, because you are ruled by Jupiter, which is a, net, a planet of like luck and good fortune and things just kind of like falling into place. So I think you're getting this message of like, don't worry about things, things will fall into place, keep yourself busy, don't worry. Like if you've got a sense of something coming in for you, like you're waiting for money or you're waiting for an opportunity or you're waiting for like something to wrap up so that something new can begin. It's like the universe has got this, you don't even have to worry, just kind of keep yourself busy in the meantime uh you know get your mind off it something like that um so yeah you've also got here it says money restrictions on this card and then this says elevation of uh, money so it's like or overseas trip so it's like if you've been worried about money or you've had some money issues I think there could be money coming your way that's going to kind of resolve it I'm not saying that you're going to win the lottery or anything like that I don't say that in my readings but it's got that feeling of kind of like um you know uh stumbling into good fortune in some sort of way like good luck good fortune so that could be I don't know uh you're looking for a job or you're thinking about leaving your job because it's like you don't earn enough money and then all of a sudden like you I don't know go online and there's this job advertisement like someone's retweeted it and it's like oh my gosh or posted it on Facebook and you're like that's exactly what I was looking for I'm gonna go and give that a try you do feel quite happy-go-lucky you do feel quite um um you know, there's just this sense of like, stuff's just going to work out for me. Even if it hasn't been working out for you, I feel like there could be kind of, a, you are an optimistic sign usually, depending on your full chart, but Sagittarius itself is an optimistic sign. It's like, I just know things are going to fall into place. So if you've had a bit of a dark clouds mentality or dark clouds phase, um, look into positive manifestation techniques because I think uh, what you think about you bring about and you want to kind of focus on the sunny days and not the dark clouds. I'm saying that because at the back of my house today the sun is red hot and like it's, it's almost like middle of summer like blazing hot bright sunlight so much so that I couldn't actually see what I was doing in the kitchen because it was so bright in that kind of when I looked in that direction and then I come to the other side of the house and there's like dark clouds rolling in so it's all about perspective like which window are you going to look out of are you going to look to the future are you going to look to the past are you going to envision a bright future for yourself or are you going to envision a dark future for yourself like you know just be careful about keeping that positivity high um you know and yeah what else was I going to say uh you've got Venus here has come out for you now Venus is the planet of like love and romance and femininity and receptivity and all these wonderful things um uh, so it could be romance for you or it could just be doing what you love right doing the things that you know speak to your heart I am getting a little bit of a scenario coming through for some of you of um almost like a fated romance like I don't know bumping into someone on the street or like I don't know you both reach for the same carton of milk in the supermarket or you know you meet each other on a night out and you you do it's like this feeling of like oh my god this could be the one but then not even knowing the name right it's like you know they walk off they you know let you have the milk and they walk away and you go oh I should have got their number it's kind of got this what could have been energy you know like what might have been so again this doesn't mean it's necessarily something happening right now it could be something from the past um you know it's like if only this person was with me right now like all the fun I could be having so take any of that if it resonates leave anything that doesn't 
I'm just going to kind of get into your reading. Your song that came through, and I'm not going to kind of like talk about it. If it means something to you, take it. If it doesn't, leave it. Uh, maybe just go and have a look at the lyrics. It's Lolita by um, Lana Del Rey. So again, it's got this romance edge to it. Take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. And uh, let's go. Let's go, daddy-o. I don't know what that's about, especially with Lolita. Um, okay, Saj, what's going on for Saj, please? I'm going to go quite quickly here because I'm actually going to clarify with your reading. Well, let, oh, okay. So some kind of healing or rest, you know, it's that kind of feeling of like, maybe I need a day off here, or maybe I need to just kind of like go and have a lie down for a bit to think this through. After a period of soul searching, this could be a person as well. Um, this is leading you towards, um, um, an, an offer, an offer of emotion, and new emotions opening up, new feelings opening up, new feelings to be explored. Um, it's divinely guided. It's very much of the heart space. And it talks to me about boiling things down to the bare essentials. Like what is... Like when you take away all the other factors, what remains emotionally? Like how do you really feel about this? And I feel like you are in the process of figuring something out about your heart, right? Or your emotions. So it's like, you've done some deep soul searching here. You've done some uh, shadow work, kind of resting and healing and figuring that out. You know, thinking, it's almost like feeling something after doing a period of introspection, thinking about it, figuring out what that actually means and how that applies to you. And then actually coming out of that process with some kind of, um, it's like an emotional truth, right? It's like, it's always like, um, the Ace of Cups to me talks about kind of like boiling things down. If you ever think about like doing a chemistry experiment where you, uh, you kind of like refine a liquid, right? And it kind of drips out at the other end and you get like the refined liquid. It's like the, um, the pure substance of whatever you've been figuring out. So what is the obstacle? Okay, quite a few there. Juggling, death uh temperance and the king of pentacles that feels like a situation where somebody has been juggling perhaps juggling finances you know uh giving to two different places uh that situation is coming to an end um there'll be no more juggling but there is this need to be patient again this is your card sagittarius um it is also a card about alchemy so taking what is available to you taking the circumstances taking what you have understanding that you can make something new about this situation so how she's got two pentacles it's turning into two cups and then these two cups are um alchemizing into something new which is coming into this king of pentacles energy now this could be a father figure it could be a boss it could be somebody who's going to provide some sort of offer for you we're going to have to clarify that when we come to it but that's coming through as the obstacle so juggling juggling i mean this could be grief right grieving the the end of a situation um soul searching what does this mean to you why do you feel this way being patient taking the time to process whatever that death energy is there and then into the king of pentacles which is um like solid firm foundations um feeling very comfortable feeling very secure feeling like you are in a position to give um like perhaps maybe this is a situation where i don't know if it's you or somebody else but it has the feeling of um I'm always like robbing pizza to pay Paul or something. It's like, uh, again, if you've been worried about your finances, if you felt like you've been having to stretch your funds because you've had to be paying for, again, it could be you or somebody around you, whoever this is, like paying like into a lot of different pockets, right? So it's like a lot of different financial drains or financial responsibilities where ending something and going through a period of patience is uh putting somebody in a much more secure position than they were before so for example it could be perhaps um just as an example uh somebody who has uh, a lot of different loans right to pay into so i'm paying this off i'm paying my car off i'm paying my house off i'm paying my um 
I don't know, that holiday off, I'm paying my student loans off. And it's like, maybe, um, now I don't recommend anyone do this because it is a little bit of a, a controversial thing, but it's just an example. So it could be like consolidating all those different pay payments into one payment, um, which is uh, less of a juggle. Again, be very cautious around that. Don't rush into that because there's been some, I personally know people who have had very bad experience of doing that. Um, I'm sure it works for some people, but it really doesn't work for others. So just be very, very careful about that. And especially about what you secure that against. You wouldn't want to secure everything about against your own home, for example, especially if you've got children. Um, but it could be also something like, um, you know, I've been paying my phone contracts. I've been paying my broadband. I've been paying for um, this, my TV. And maybe it's going to be cheaper if I get a package deal. Uh, or maybe it's going to be cheaper if instead of paying... Uh, for a separate phone contract, I end that contract and just take out, you know, um, one, do you know what I mean? It's like ending something that you've been paying out towards, but that's the obstacle. What is the strength? Uh, resisting, resisting this cup is showing as your strength right now. So again, it's, it could be that you're it's not quite the right time to take this opportunity. Again, this opportunity is coming in your future position and this is your current strength. So it's like, uh, again, with temperance, it's like not rushing into this. And again, this is carrying uh, new emotions, new feelings. So not rushing into new relationships if you're still healing from past relationship, especially if you've experienced some kind of um, uh, difficult ending. Um it's like take it seems to be the message of taking your time is what's going to pay off in the long run it could be something where somebody's uh, i'm not necessarily seeing this i'm just getting this intuitively so again it's not going to be for everybody to take it or leave it but kind of like if somebody was trying for a baby and it wasn't working um it's like maybe have a break you know, especially if you're getting very stressed about it, you know, it's it's difficult to conceive a baby if you're you're very stressed because, you know, that stress has a impact on your body as well. So, for example, if somebody was going through, um, uh, you know, maybe having a little bit of medical help to or, or not, you know, like trying to conceive a baby and, you know, physically your body's just not accepting it. Um, it could be for whatever reason. Right. I'm not kind of blaming or anything like that. Uh, really, I, I want to emphasize I'm not kind of blaming anyone if, if they're trying to get pregnant, it's not quite working. But it could just be if you if you have a huge amount of emotion wrapped up in this and a, a um, you know, a lot riding on it and maybe even like financial pressure and things like this that are coming along with it and you're getting very stressed, it's it's not physically optimal for you. So it's like, maybe have a break from it maybe go and do something else maybe take your mind off it and again it doesn't have to be trying for a baby it could be um you know trying to have a relationship with somebody you know maybe you've been dating a few different people it's not working out you're starting to get in your own head about it you know questioning why isn't it working out is there something wrong with me um and it's like going into new relationships or uh trying new things when you are uh, in that negative place of being stressed or anxious or uh, worrying is it's not optimal to start any kind of new relationship or, or uh, whatever that Ace of Cups is for you. It's not the right time, right? If you're still stressing and recovering from the things that didn't work out. So if you're taking a break, that is showing as your strength and it's the right thing for you to do at this time. It doesn't mean that you can't take that cup in the future. It doesn't mean that you can't open up, try again, um, have those new emotions, those new experiences um, in the future. It just means that your body needs to rest right now and that's okay, right? You know, allow yourself that time. Don't put that kind of pressure on yourself of like, I have to do everything now. Distract yourself. Um, what's the blind spot, please? What is the blind spot for Sagittarius? Ten of Swords. You do have a sense of... Or somebody feels very betrayed. The Ten of Swords is a betrayal. It's a painful ending where somebody feels betrayed. Um... So again, if 
this is some kind of breakdown of a relationship for some of you. There could be some confusion on the other person's side about what actually happened here. Um, we'll clarify that in a little bit, but that's in your blind spot. You don't realise that somebody's perhaps even like checking the phone, you know, going over old messages you know, going over old conversations with Sagittarius, what, where did I, did I say something wrong? Did I, you know, why did Sagittarius end this? Is this something I said? Is this something I did? You know, maybe checking the phone to see is Sagittarius going to call? What is Sagittarius's fear? The four of wands, I'll have to clarify that. Um, I mean, the four of wands is nothing to be feared, right? It's, uh, um, it could be, it could be like a party or a get together, you know, and you're really not looking forward to it. You don't really want to go a bit worried about seeing somebody again, perhaps if, especially if you're not quite healed from that relationship, especially if it was a painful ending, you know, a little bit of worry about running into that person again. Um, you could have concerns about starting again, you know, building, building a life with somebody again if you know it didn't work out in the past um who can help Sagittarius at this time remember I will clarify things so who can help Sagittarius at this time I knew I was going to see this card and it landed on this card here because I looked at this card before I asked about your fear and I heard the word sabotage and I didn't say it because I thought well a ten of cards ten of swords isn't really sabotage that's more like the seven of swords that's what i was thinking and then the seven of swords has come out so it's like and it landed on that ten of swords so there's a message in there so sabotage somebody sabotaged something somebody feels like they were betrayed did you sabotage a relationship even subconsciously did you sabotage a situation uh, perhaps because you needed more time to heal you know you were rushing into something you felt overwhelmed perhaps so you know you subconsciously sabotaged it this person doesn't understand what happened if you feel like there was a situation where again it could be this person sabotaged you they sabotaged your relationship if you feel like there was a situation where there was sabotage in some sort of way or even like sneaky underhand behavior in some sort of way that is coming through as what can help you at this time so i will clarify that again that's quite a curious position for that to be in it's like i'll have to come back to that one and clarify it what's the actual advice what is the advice for sagittarius communicate take action yep okay move forward and whoa, where will this lead you? Okay, that's lovely energy. It's lay on my arm. Uh, Queen of Pentacles with a High Priestess. Um, that is very nurturing. Very, very, uh, very, it's like, I don't know if this is you giving this to someone else or they're giving it to you, but this is the energy of like all your needs provided for. Uh, this is deep understanding, deep intuition, um, very nurturing. Um, I don't know, again, because you have that King of Pentacles and this is the Queen of Pentacles. They're normally partnered in some sort of way. So they can be people who are in a relationship, right? They share a house together. Could be business partners. You've got Capricorn and Scorpio. This is normally Taurus. You've got actually, let's just run through, Virgo, uh, Pisces, Scorpio, Sagittarius, Taurus. Uh, yeah, uh, Capricorn, Scorpio. So these could be people that you collaborate with in some sort of way. I'll clarify those as well. So, but that is a good outcome, what I want to say. Okay, what is coming through from this deck? Something else wants to come out of here. I'm just going to see what it is. Five of Cups. Interestingly enough, if you're dealing with a Scorpio, Scorpio had double Five of Cups in their reading. So that could be something for someone with that. Maybe somebody's like Scorpio Cusp. Right, where do I want to go here? Tell me about this Ten of Swords situation because this is in your blind spot, right? So this is something that you're not aware of, that you're not paying attention to. Um, you're not realising that this is a factor. Could be an apology. I think that's the Page of Cups. A hidden apology. Somebody could need an apology. Um, they could want to apologise. 
especially if there's some kind of painful ending involved. They could be waiting for an apology from you. Pisces energy again, could be a, uh, a water sign child involved. What is the Seven of Swords? Because the Seven of Swords is connected to that Ten of Swords. And this is this is an energy outside of you that can help you. So a person, place or thing. Seven of Swords. How can this help Sagittarius? Because it's something that needs healing. So seeing it, right? Seeing the betrayal, seeing the sabotage, seeing the sneaky, sneaky behavior for what it was whether this is subconsciously something that you did yourself without even, you know, intentionally realizing it. Um, you know, we all do that from time to time. I'm not calling you out. Or if it's something that somebody did to you, um, it's something that needs to be healed because it's, it, there's, there's something here that has caused pain. Um, and it, it needs more, it needs more thinking about, which I see you doing here. So this is the, this is the center card. This is what it's all about for you. What is this four of swords, please? Two of swords. So some kind of conflict. Again, somebody could have blocked someone on social media. There's some confusion around this. Um, it feels like conflicting thoughts, conflicting opinions. Again, really, if you're on the cusp of Scorpio, so if you're, you know, um, maybe Sagittarius, but you're really close to the Scorpio cusp, maybe go and check out their reading. Um, or if you're dealing with the Scorpio, this has a similar feeling to it no wonder i was like close on the heels of scorpio right it feels like this is almost like a part two to their reading okay so two of swords so you've done that hermit mode in the past this deep soul searching you've dragged something out of the shadows into the light right out of your subconscious into your consciousness you're processing it you're figuring it out it's to do with some kind of conflict probably with another person some kind of betrayal some kind of sabotage a relationship that didn't work out um really like really you know sh shining a light on it whether this is just yourself bringing it to the surface and kind of like you know processing it and not pushing it down and ignoring it anymore but actually like figuring out like, you know, how did that make me feel? Is What part did I play in that? Is there anything I could have done differently? How do I wish that person had, had acted differently? You know, like, you know, and I'm not, I don't know your situation, right? I don't know what happened, but it's like asking all those questions, like going, yeah, dragging it into the light. Look at that with the sun card there. Okay, so let's have a look at this obstacle. So what's the two of pentacles, please, as the obstacle? What's the obstacle? Um, um, Ace of Swords. So some sort of truth. Uh, again, maybe uh, some information or news or a realization that somebody was juggling, uh, or a situation was you know somebody was giving to two places. Um, what's the Death card? Uh, Queen of Wands. Again, that's your energy. That is Sagittarius. So, um, clarify Death card, Queen of Wands. It could be somebody passed away who was Queen of Wands. Somebody, uh, a situation ended because somebody was shut out. Again, somebody could have been blocked on social media. It's like this, whoever this Queen of Wands is, and again, it's Sag Sagittarius energy, so it could be you. It's like somebody was pushed out, somebody was shut out from a situation. You know, a situation ended because somebody was pushed out, is how that feels. What is temperance? I mean, it's patience, right? It's alchemy. It's that processing of like figuring out your passions and your emotions here. It's Scorpio again. Um, temperance. Coming into having very, very deep feelings. Again, this could be you or them. Having very, very deep feelings about that Ten of Swords, right? That stabbed in the back, that betrayal, that ending. Uh, really there's a lot of emotions tied up in that and but coming to a place where you're not overwhelmed by them you're not um consumed by them in any sort of way but you be 
you find through this process of healing and time and thinking things through and you know allowing yourself that time to be it's funny I just watched um I think it's called The Take the channel called The Take um a recent video that they put up this week which is called like the sad girl meme um which is all sad girl trope which is like you know Lana Del Rey and uh Billy Eilish uh, and all these brilliant like cancerians who are so good I mean this is sh showing a Scorpio but um there's a lot of Cancerian singers at the moment and cancer Cancerian artists who are, or people with those placements who are so good at processing their feelings and turning it into art. You know, I can take blue and turn it into something beautiful. If Picasso had never been sad, we would have never had the blue period. So it's those, the ability to take um, feelings of sadness and pain and, um, you know, those kind of lower moods that are seen as bad or something we should push away, you know, because we're lied to by, you know, by people trying to sell us products that we should always be happy, that we should all have this perfect life. It's a lie. Nobody has that, at least not 100% of the time. So allowing ourselves to feel sad, allowing ourselves to process pain um, and figure out what that means to us and, you know, how are we going to incorporate that? What are we going to do with that? What are we going to do with those feelings, right? And we're not going to push them down because that doesn't serve us. That doesn't help us. We're going to bring them into the light and we're going to do something with them. Whether that's turning them into a beautiful song or a piece of poetry or a piece of artwork or just, um, you know, putting lying in bed, putting on those sad songs and having that catharsis, right, to get those emotions out, to figure out where do we stand? How do I feel? What does this mean to me? And then you get to King of Cups energy where you're not ruled by your emotions, but you uh, rule your emotions, right? Be not in a way where you're like quashing them, but in a way where you, you feel everything that you can feel as a human being and you love that about yourself. And yes, it's painful, but you turn that pain into something beautiful, which is King of Cups energy or Queen of Cups energy. So really get into this place of emotional equilibrium and emotional depth, right? It's not that there's no feelings. It's that the feelings are part of you in a very cohesive uh mature way um, about whatever this ending in betrayal was but there is a need for more information right because i do feel again it could be you it could be this other person there are, there are questions over what happened here why did this end you know why did you block me why did this uh you know why was i pushed out so um acknowledging the fact that you need more information on this ending and I don't know what that relationship was for you and it may not be your reading at all right don't force it to fit if it's not your situation um but if there is your situation and you're going yeah 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 I know what this is then you know then it's your reading use your own intuition to guide you it's not going to be everybody's reading it's a collective reading it's not a personal reading but yeah it's um but this takes time right um get into a place of balance of uh, of comfort and um, like absorption I don't know if that's the right word but that's how it's coming through like absorption of of what happened but still recognizing that there are unanswered questions um sometimes even being okay with the fact that there's unanswered questions you know um I'm going to put that page of cups and four of swords away as well um what about the king of pentacles please why is the king of pentacles here tell me about this king of pentacles yeah there's something unresolved with this person again it could be a taurus if you're connected to a taurus it could be something to do with your own stability and your ability to make decisions for yourself and uh, stand on your own two feet and feel like you're self-reliant and that you are you know you have everything you need your needs are met it could be that this specific person um you know it could be a boss it could be a father but there's unresolved issues here with this the world card in the reverse that's lessons have not been fully learned and fully incorporated here and it could be on your side it could be on their side that side it could be between you but it feels like there's unanswered questions there's no closure with whatever that is um you had the song as well um it's Billy Joel and it's, um, I don't need you to worry about me because I'm all right, right? Uh, it's my life. So again, it's like maybe you're saying this to them. I don't need you to worry about me. It's my life. You know, I'm making my own decisions here. If I make mistakes, I'm going to, you know, learn from them. Um, but they're my mistakes to make, right? I don't need you to protect me from 
uh, from life. You know, it's my life to live and I'm going to live it how I see fit. So that's quite a Sagittarian energy. I did think it was quite a Sagittarius song, uh, but there could be something like that happening here. Uh, you do sometimes come in, uh, you do sometimes have a time with Capricorns reading. Again, it could be Cuspers, uh, but sometimes there's a bit of an interplay between those two, two signs where um, Capricorns kind of comes in sometimes with this fatherly energy who's trying to put the boundaries in place to, uh, you know, put the rules down um, and kind of define what is and isn't okay within a relationship or within a parent-child situation. Um, and Sagittarius often comes with a more rebellious energy. It's like questioning the rules and pushing at those boundaries. So again, it's this is Taurus energy, but I'm just thinking about how sometimes you have that kind of uh, relationship with Capricorn's reading. So again, take it if it resonates, leave it if it doesn't. There's that King of Pentacles. There's light being shone on whatever this is. Uh, what's the four of pentacles in the fear? The fear is the ace of cups, right? Uh, again, new feelings, a new start, a fresh start, but you know, maybe building a home with somebody new. Tell me about the ace of cups. What's the ace of cups? Because yeah, that's the sense of, um, I'm scared to open my heart because I've been betrayed in the past. I'm scared to open my heart. I'm scared to take this divine cup because, you know, I thought I had that once in the past and it ended in this and it's painful and uh yeah so why is the four of cups the strength again did we question that because the truth is you're seeing feelings as a burden you are you've had heavy responsibilities you've had baggage that you've been carrying from the past so um to open your heart at this time feels like a repeat of that past cycle. I want to say it's only feeling like that, that because you haven't completely closed out whatever hurt you in the past. Once you finish dealing with that, I think then you'll be um, more, less afraid or less um, vulnerable to having a new start. But a new start is coming. It's just taking time. So don't worry if you feel like, I'm going to be alone forever. You've got five of cups, right? Five of cups, crying over spilt milk, crying about the relationships that didn't work out. But you, uh, there's a bridge there. There are new directions that you can travel where you can turn around and recognize that there's a two of cups waiting for you, which is your cup and somebody else's cup kind of uh, coming into balance, alchemizing, right? Uh, creating something new. Maybe some of you are in a same-sex relationship. Uh, two girls uh, would be two cups. Um, I'm not talking about other things with that. Some of you may know what I'm uh, alluding to. Let's move swiftly on. Um, eight of Wands. So that's your advice. Eight of Wands. So some communication and action to move forward. Eight of Pentacles. You're working on this. You're doing this. You're getting better at it. Every single day, you're getting better and better and better at doing this. Uh, you're figuring things out. It's like one step at a time. Um, you are accomplishing this. And it could be that some of you are really focusing on work right now. So do you remember at the beginning, I said it's like you're distracting yourself. Start distracting yourself with like doing jobs. Um, so um, it felt to me like ho like homework, like not, well, maybe homework, I don't know. Depends if some of you are still at, at school. Um, but like housework, because I'm at home. So that's how it came through to me. I was like busy myself with like, uh, I was going to clean out the fridge, didn't quite get there because I realised it needed defrosting and I was like, I'm going to have to wait. Again, this sense of like waiting and things taking time. I was like, I'm going to have to wait and kind of like eat the stuff that's in the fridge so that the fridge has less in it and then I can like defrost it properly. But it's like that kind of thing. It's like um, focusing on uh, the practical side because you're not ready to focus on the emotional side yet and that's okay um, you know it takes time and it is a process and you are taking action you are moving forward you're doing all the right things so Sagittarius this is a really good reading really really good reading for you Queen of Pentacles tell me about the Queen of Pentacles this is, could be somebody from your past it could be a mother, it could be a boss, uh, it could be a Capricorn, uh, but it's somebody from your past. You've got a lot of nostalgia for this. Um, it could be thinking about your own childhood, um, how you were nurtured in childhood. It could be something about a pet. There's like a rabbit and a dog here. Um, but yeah, there's definitely some some nostalgia, some thinking about the past. Uh, be careful about rose-tinted glasses with the roses. Um, a lot of the time we can, um, you know, when we're in a relationship, whatever form that takes, um, 
it can be really quite stormy and then we get some distance and we all we remember are the good days we kind of can forget about the bad bad days or vice versa but there's some nostalgia there in connection to whoever that queen of pentacles is for you um yeah Uh, tell me about the High Priestess. Oh, Empress. Eight of Wands. There's a uh, pregnant Tommy for those of you who do want to try for a baby. Um, the Empress is a mother card. <sighs> You've got the Empress, the Queen of Pentacles, and the High Priestess here. It feels like two different people. But you seem to be thinking about mothers in general um, and different ways of mothering. Um, so you could have a mother who is Capricorn, Scorpio, or Libra, or Taurus. You could be a mother. You could be wanting to be a mother, but it feels like um, because the Five of Swords is conflict and it's kind of like, um, it's, this is my peck in your head card. So you could have a mother who's a bit of a nag, right? a Libra mother who's a bit of a nag. I can be that. Um, but it's like, um, again, it's like, don't worry about me. I'm all right. Because this Eight of Wands is like you following the advice, making progress, communicating, um, working on it, working on your communication skills, perhaps working on your communication skills as a mother and how you handle conflict in relationships. Maybe it's worth looking at what your relationship was like, again, with that nostalgia and looking at the past. What was your relationship like with your own mother? Who, look at mother figures in your life so again it could be that you find you know some kind of boss in work who kind of mothers you and nurtures you you know like a mother hen energy so while they're not actually your mo mother they could have that that kind of personality in nature and you could have a similar relationship so it's like looking at different female energies in your life and how they've nurtured you what kind of support have they given you the queen of pentacles gives very practical support so the queen of pentacles is like you know your bed will be made you will have you know if you need money they will figure that out for you you know it might be that they give you practical advice and say you know go and get a job you know they might give you uh they might encourage you to develop your skills it's a very very practical kind of love right it's not necessarily very showy um you know they're not going to be writing your love poetry with the queen of pentacles but they're going to make sure that you're comfortable right and that you've got good food that you that you're nurtured uh the high priestess is a scorpionic kind of love so this is the kind of mom who just knows right she just knows what you're up to uh very 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 deep emotions um this person will love you with the whole soul um but again with the high priestess being quite a secretive energy uh they will be very secretive right they're not going to tell you everything that's going on in their life my mum was a scorpio um and um but very intuitive like that kind of like soul bond kind of relationship if it's negative it could be a little bit emotionally controlling uh you know the sort of person who um makes you need them be wary of that um Empress Mothers, uh, so Taurus, Libra, with that Venus energy as well. This is a very affectionate kind of mother. This is the kind of mom who is going to be hugging you. She's also all four queens of the tarot. So she's queen of swords, queen of cups, queen of pentacles, queen of, um, what am I missing, wands. So uh, she's kind of the ultimate mother, basically. She's, she's a good mother. She's... Um, very affectionate, you know, very understanding, very nurturing, passionate, protective, uh, probably quite funny. She's kind of, she is the ultimate mother, so it doesn't have to be a Taurus or Libra, um, but the Empress carries that energy of like Mother Earth, you know, Gaia, goddess kind of energy. Very flattering if you're a Taurus or Libra. But um, yeah, she's, it could be, it could be 
Scorpio for sorry why did I call you Scorpio again some of you could be on the cusp or cross watching Sagittarius it could be that you are in the process of figuring out how do I become the ultimate mother and this is something that you're working on right because none of us are perfect not even Libras and Tauruses none of us are perfect you know we all run into conflicts uh you know sometimes we run into those moments where we're like our kid is doing something and we don't know how to handle it like how do I help my child through this um so it's like um, thinking about examples of parenting and it could even be like examples on the TV, you know, or, you know, how your friend, you know, going to your friend's house and seeing what their mum's like. But it's like, um, and again, don't worry if you're masculine, just take it as it resonates. If you, if you identify as masculine, it's like you're in a nurturer, right? That kind of... Um, the, the part of yourself that wants to mother people um, or it's your own relationship with your own mother and you know healing this healing any any conflicts um, not even necessarily with them but because of the relationship that, that you had with them but yeah I want to say this is with the Empress card it's almost like cherry picking the best bits is the way it's coming through it's it's like looking for all the best examples of parenting that you can possibly find and incorporating them, right? Being like, do you know what? I remember my, when my mum used to put a note in my lunchbox and how happy that made me if I was having a bad day in school. That's something I want to do for my children. Or it's like, um, you know, I... And my parents always struggle for money, but I remember my best friend's mother, like she worked in the night shift to scrape together some money so that her kid could go on that school trip. I remember her doing that. I want to make sure that I do that for my kids as well. So it's like, you know, looking for all those good examples and emulating that and working on it. So it feels very, very good. And it feels like you're on the way to achieving that energy so again it doesn't necessarily have to be parent child it doesn't have to necessarily mean that you are a mother that you're having a child but it's like absorbing the good examples of that nurturing energy so that you can nurture others that's how that feels to me okay i'm gonna randomize you a song and get you some advice so i will be back with you in a minute it's funny to me because um, I was saying this Empress card's Libra. I'm a Libra um, and my daughter's Sagittarius <laughs> and I can be a bit of a smother. Um, so for those of you who know what I'm saying here, it's it's Beverly Goldberg in uh, The Goldbergs, which is a, a TV show. It's a comedy. And the mother, Beverly, um, she's uh, they call her the smother because she smothers them with love, right? So I can be a helicopter parent. I can try too hard with my parenting and sometimes my daughter can we just be like look give me space <laughs> you know like let me make some mistakes here and I'm like I want to protect you from the world <laughs> just like just stop it <laughs> but we have a really good relationship where we can she can be honest with me and I, I can listen and you know I can be honest with her and vice versa and we can talk things through and figure things out and kind of respect each other's needs she respects my need to protect and smother I respect her need to have some freedom we kind of find a balance with that we're quite good at it really I think I like to think we have a good relationship where my mum was a a Scorpio and she was she I mean she I felt the love that she had for me I knew I was so loved but she could be quite secretive and she was overly protective in a way where um she wouldn't necessarily you know she would hide things for, from me to protect me but then I grew up thinking well what is she not telling me <laughs> you know so I, I would have liked to have had a more open relationship with my mum but she you know she was a brilliant woman she did love me to bits and she she tried so hard with you know what she thought was best so um yeah but again we can learn a lot from that right I can understand that I am in part the mother that I am because of the mother that I had um and then other I had a, a Sagittarius uh, mother figure as well I've actually got two Sagittarius mother figures uh, or have had and have um and, you know, I had a brilliant, an absolutely brilliant Sagittarius mother figure um, who, you know, had conversations with me that my mum didn't. And I needed that. I needed that openness, that fieriness. Um, so that she gave me an example there that, uh, you know, I drew a lot from. And again, my mum was brilliant in so many different ways. Uh, but every mother has brilliant, brilliant points. And then like, you know, parts where you know there's a little bit more work that needs to happen there or you know people are just who they are right um but yes yeah, 
definitely feels like that. Right, I'm going to stop talking. So let's get you a song. So light bulb moment, epiphany. Let's give Sagittarius some clarity here. Hotel California, the Nancy Sinatra version. This could be heaven or this could be hell. Uh, I don't know. Maybe that song means something specific to you. Maybe it was your mum's favourite song. Maybe your mum was called Nancy. What's really curious to me is uh, Scorpio, uh, in their list of songs, if you go back to the, the Scorpio reading and check out the description box, there's a whole list of songs that came through for their reading. And one of them was um, Something Stupid, which is Nancy Sinatra and her father Frank. So again, parent-child relationships coming through there. So maybe you are a bit of a, Nancy Sinatra character, maybe your mum was. Uh, do take that as it resonates and leave it if it doesn't. Okay, I'm going to get you an advice card, but what do I want to go? I am going to go for Archetypes Guidebook. Hold on to your hats, boys, because this one can be a little bit, a little bit of a heavier one. It can sometimes have like quite profound messages. So I'll just get the card, I'll just read it, and you can interpret it as you like. Advice, please. For Sagittarius. Advice please for Sagittarius. I don't know why they're showing me this, but um I'm being drawn to the fact that myself and my daughter both have a Sagittarius Mars placement. So you have the five of swords up there, which is about conflict. Um something that we something really good about my relationship with my daughter is that um with us both having that Mars Sagittarius um placement uh, mars is about how you take action and what angers you and when you're angry how do you deal with that anger a lot of the time mars sagittarius is um it can be a bit flight or fight right it's like um am i either gonna stand here and fight this battle with a huge amount of like fire and rage or i just this situation feels terrible i want to get out of here so something that we that we both like to do if we get angry and frustrated is we like to go out for a walk. Um, you know, we like to get outside because Sagittarius is an energy of outdoors. Um, so uh, adventure outdoors, kind of exploring. Uh, so we like to go out and kind of have a walk and explore. And it's it's a really good way for us both to process our anger and frustration. So sometimes we can just like walk next to each other, like with our headphones in and, you know, like that kind of like, like we don't speak to each other, we just walk for a bit and then after five or ten minutes we're like laughing and joking and everything's fine. Um, so, But it's quite good because we understand each other, right? We understand like why each other's angry or why each other's frustrated because, you know, we've got that similarity. Um, I don't know why they drew me to that, but um, that's kind of why you got. So the unseen, and it was hidden, it hid itself in the deck. So I'm just going to read it, make of it what you will. Which make me think of this blind spot, right? The sabotage, the unseen. Okay, the spirit, the ancestor, the, the eternal. The unseen is just as it sounds. We cannot see it, yet it sees us, watching and waiting with wisdom, both kind and instructive. We feel this presence, sense it, intuit it, and then doubt its existence, though it rallies our attention time and time again. The energy of the unseen may come in many forms, a compelling dream, a sudden insight, a clear voice, a vision or message from a loved one who has passed over to the other side. I really need to check out my mum's handbag again because she was such uh, she was Scorpio and you've got that Scorpio there and I had a dream about my mum's handbag so I need to go through it and just see what's in there. Um, it is natural to fear these communications as they challenge our perception perception of what is real when this card appears your guides are near the eternal is present the doorway between the worlds is ajar listen and I remember you've got that high priestess energy so you're in it's the perfect time for you to be able to sense these things um listen the sounds may seem as though they come from a distant land but they call from your innermost chambers when like clairvoyant guidance and whispers of wisdom that's interesting. It says, go deeper, King, King Hamlet, the three fates and the shining. Now, it's not Hamlet, but Macbeth. 
um, just before your reading, I was getting um, a couple of different references to witches. So uh, Scorpio's ending, uh, Scorpio's reading, if you go and check out their songs as well, uh, they had one about witches, um, must be the season of the witch, Lana Del Rey. Um, and I looked for a podcast while I was washing the pots and um, there's a podcast called Dark History um, and the podcast episode that was recommended to me was um, something about witches. Like, so it's like the dark history of witchcraft kind of thing. Um, and I was thinking to myself how coincidentally uh, one of my friends in work was talking about how her sons are learning about Macbeth um, and how I was trying to talk to her. It was really busy in work. I didn't really get to have the conversation fully, but I was trying to talk to her about how... Um, and I think she understood this. She's a very intelligent friend. Um, she, um, so I think she already knew what I was going to say anyway. But I was talking about how Shakespeare was writing uh, under uh, King Jane, James at that time. He'd kind of been writing for Queen Elizabeth. Uh, a new monarch came on the scene and he started writing for, you know, to uh, either propaganda for or in praise of King James, who uh, was very anti-witch, right? Uh, so he had this, he wrote a book about hunting witches and <laughs> this kind of thing. Um, and in my head, um, I suddenly heard In Defence of Witches. And I thought, what is In Defence of Witches? That sounds like it should be a book. I googled it. It is indeed a book. I think it was published in July this year. So I don't know if some of you are reading that book. If you're interested in reading that book, I was also thinking about The Crucible um, and just witch hunts in general. So um, it's Halloween, right? Uh, they could be something, maybe you're thinking about dressing up as a witch. Maybe these topics and conversations are coming up for you. But it's just funny to me, like the three fates. Um, yeah. And whether or not, so we were saying in work, whether or not the three witches were actually, um, whether they instigated, um, the, the downfall of Macbeth, right? Whether they instigated these things or whether it would have happened anyway, but they just predicted it. A bit like we don't talk about Bruno, right? It's like, did they speak it into existence or did they just predict it you know uh were the witches evil or would you were they just truth speakers um guidance comes in many forms don't expect it to be glittery or comfortable don't we don't talk about bruno right the spirit will speaks for the speaks the truth sometimes it soothes and sometimes it burns being raised by the unseen is a gift treat it kindly and allow yourself to be seen by eternal eyes i want a truth then i want a truth for you Can we give Sagittarius some clarity here? Can we give, can the spirits give Sagittarius a truth? Queen of emotions. Talk about emotional balance, right? So Cancerian energy, just generally water sign energy. Let's see what it says. Queen of emotions, love, emotional intuition and intelligence, creativity, joyful and meaningful connection, relationships, self-care and self-love, feminine nature, the sea of emotions, accessing how you truly feel and sharing your love with others, creating from the heart, prompt, tentacles of experience. Rising up from the deep within the cavern of the ocean, this queen is connected to all that flows. She is the uncon unconscious bridge that bridges... Hang on. She is the unconscious bridge between the spaces of the heart and the world that flourish around it. Her watery nature invites you to flow into portals of self-discovery and work your, with your own waves to grow compassion and passion and to connect back to your truest emotions. All of your emotions. What did I say? What did I say? She asks you to seek this alignment so that your actions, words, thoughts and breath all beat in the rhythm of your true feelings. See yourself as you truly are. Feel your essence as you truly feel. This nurturing, caring energy is one that washes away unhealthy attachments and bubbles down through the earth to create foundations of sacred space in relationships. It allows strong empathy without the energetic baggage of taking on other people's stuff. And it breeds intuitive creativity and small pockets of devotional joy. Fall into the Queen's flowing compassion. 
Like the sea, I flow in and out of breath, wading in the lapping lim liminality of the heart song. Okay, I hope that was helpful to you. I'm going to leave it there. I do want to say though, if you're enjoying my readings and you haven't yet subscribed, um, I would really love to get that subscriber count up to 500 um, because um, not that I count followers and things like this, but um, when you get to 500 subscribers on YouTube, it unlocks, um, I think if I understand correctly, it unlocks um, certain community features, things like polls um, so and community messages. So I'd love to be able to communicate with you all better by being, being able to post those community messages. For example, if I was uh, having some trouble with readings and everybody's sat there going when is, when is my reading going to go up what's happening you know where's Cinderella why are there no readings I can I can put a post up and say hey guys you know this is going on um, or you know I can get feedback from you by uh, putting up polls so that you can kind of do those um you know, if you're not comfortable in like leaving a comment to give me feedback, I can put a poll up saying like, what type of reading would you like? Uh, and you can kind of vote on those. Uh, it's just a way that I would love to be able to communicate with you all better. Uh, so if you haven't subscribed yet and you wouldn't mind doing so, if you could hit that subscribe button um, and if we could try and get up to 500, then um, and maybe a few over just to kind of give me that buffer zone. I would love to be able to use those community features to kind of interact with you all better. That'd be awesome. Uh, no pressure though. If you don't want it, that's totally fine as well. All right. Do take care of yourselves. I will see you again soon. And, uh, you know, yeah, keep the love flowing, Sagittarius. You know, you have to love yourself first, right? And there's no shame in that. And you seem to be doing... I want to say, Sag, whatever you're doing here, you seem like you absolutely are moving in the right direction. And I think you should be really proud of yourselves for everything that you've been going through and everywhere, you know, where you're heading. It looks really, really good. All right. Take care. See you again soon. Bye, friends.